Taichung is big. The roads are big, the parks are big, the buildings are big, and even the public art is big. My journey begins at one of the most cavernous urban spaces in all of Taichung, a place right at the heart of the city. I'm here at the City Hall, and I've come to talk with Mayor Lu Xiaoyin to find out about how the city is making a name for itself around the world. So where's the mayor taking us today? She says we're going straight to the top. Now, I'm not sure what that means, but come with me and we'll find out. I travel up to the top of City Hall. The mayor meets me on the ninth floor in a secluded rooftop garden. A lot of people are familiar with Taichung's modern features, the striking National Taichung Theater, which has no right angles anywhere inside the building, the multi-million dollar apartment buildings inhabited by the city's ultra-rich, and the shiny modern train station. But in recent years, Taichung has been touching up older parts of the city too, and that began with opening up a key traffic artery to connect the old and new parts of the city. Another newly renovated building is the 100-year-old Empire Sugar Factory, which was built during the Japanese colonial period. The city is also home to some of the oldest bookstores in the nation, century-old shops that have gotten a new lease on life. Mayor Lu tells me that there are more than 10,000 restaurants in the city. And two years ago, Taichung even got its own Michelin guide. And today, it features nearly 70 restaurants. And that, she says, is how Taichung became known for sweet treats like sun cakes, taro cakes, and even Western pastries like these decadent creations. I know this. This is boba tea. Boba tea. Yes. <laughs> Food is just one of the reasons people are moving to the city in droves. It's one of the only places in Taiwan where the population is actually increasing. I've noticed that actually Taichung, I never thought it would be the second largest city in Taiwan, but it's actually surpassed Kaohsiung and Taipei to become the second largest city. Why is that? But what's so great about Taichung? A lot of people think of it as just a pit stop between Taipei and Kaohsiung. Well, the mayor has come prepared to prove them wrong. Now, obviously, Mayor Lu is going to be the number one cheerleader for her own city. She is the mayor, after all. But some of the world's biggest travel websites are also waking up to the charms of Taichung.
With borders shut these last two years, Taichung has only been playing host to local tourists. But the mayor has some treats in store for when international tourists finally return. 去年疫情最严重的时候，我们落成启用的我们的中央公园。去年四月二十五号，在中部地区第一条捷运疫情期间，我们把它开通。一旦疫情平稳，我们可以开大门，欢迎大家来。Before I leave Taizhong, I stop by one of the city's most Instagrammable hotspots, the historic Rainbow Village. It was once home to military families who came from China following the Chinese Civil War. Today, it's covered in the artwork of an elderly resident. Whose paintings were a bid to keep the village from being torn down. In the past, Taizhong was seen as a place you pass through on your way to somewhere else. But in recent years, it's truly discovered its own unique personality, its own color, as you can see here at Rainbow Village. And Taizhong is also a city in flux. In fact, they're building buildings right next door. And it's these changes, these constant discoveries of new surprises, that make Taizhong. Not just a transit stop, but a destination all of its own.